open to the instruments. So this one is the bone owl. What is the purpose? Whenever you are inserting a nail, okay, intramedullary nail, we need to create a opening into the proximal part of the bone so that we can insert the guide wire followed by the nail. So to create a opening into the bone, which means we have to create the opening to match the medulla of the, which means that to match the bone marrow part so that we can insert the guide wire followed by the nail insertion. So this instrument is called as bone awl, which will be very much sharp at the tip. Then this is a artery forceps. There are of two types. This is a straight artery forceps and the one more part will be a curved artery forceps. What is the purpose? They are used for dissection, main thing. Then second thing, as the name suggests, they are used to hold the vessels, blood vessels and for cauterization. So this is the second thing. And sometimes when we need to hold the structure, assume that I am going to do a tendon reconstruction or tendon suturing, I need to hold the tendon and I need to bring them together. That time I can use the artery forceps. Then coming to the next instrument, periosteal elevator. So as you can see on the posterior surface, it is curved like this. Yes. On the anterior surface, okay, you can see multiple serrations to hold the finger, this thing, thumb tip. Yes. So like this, I'm going to hold and I will be elevating the periosteum. Why we need to elevate the periosteum? Because 20 percentage of the blood supply to the bone is from the periosteum. So we should not cause any damage to the periosteum or we should be making sure that periosteum has only minimal damage. So we need to elevate the periosteum. Yes, for this, the periosteum elevator is required. Sometimes if you need to raise a subcutaneous this thing flap okay above the bone even that time the periosteal elevators can be used to, to elevate that flap yes then this one is called as a bone tap so what is the purpose of the bone tap so so assume that i need to apply a screw to the bone surface so after using a drill bit and drilling the hole that drill area where may not be matching the thread of the screw okay because previous screws are not self tapping screws okay so that time i need to use this t shaped instrument then i will be making the this thing tap so that the thread of the screw will match with that of the thread of the bone interior surface so that the screw can easily penetrate the bone and it will be having a good hold next instrument low man bone holding clamp so what is the purpose of this bone holding clamp as the name suggests it is useful for holding the bone surface only but when it is used see assume that there is a fracture okay so there is a fracture here so i need to reduce keep this fracture reduced so that i can apply a plate okay i can apply a plate here only if the fracture is stable here after reduction so to maintain the fracture in reduction i will be applying this bone holding clamp okay so i will be applying this clamp like this okay so this clamp will be holding the reduction like this so that i can easily fix the plate to the fracture area then then we are going for the pins steenman pin and denim pin okay so as you can see see here this is the normal shan spin. So just for differentiation, I have kept the shan spin also. See here, the tip is like a trocar tip. Okay, both denim and this is a steenman pin and this is a denim pin. Okay, both the tips of the steenman and denims are pointed, or which means there is a trocar tip at one end, and in the opposite end it will be a blunt. Okay, so what is the difference? As you can see in the denim pin there are serrations or threads at the center of the pin. So what is the purpose? Yes, this denim pin and uh, this thing, strainman pin, both are useful for the skeletal traction. Assume that there is a fracture of the shaft of femur and this patient is having some, uh, this thing, uh, hemoglobin is reduced. Yes, or he is a diabetic, his blood sugar is reduced. So I cannot post this patient for OT for at least five to six days. So till that time, there will be, this patient will be having a severe pain and there will be displacement at the fracture site. Since we all know that uh, this thing, femur bone has 
maximum amount of the muscles attached both proximally and distally so there will be huge displacement at the fracture site so to prevent this displacement or to maintain the fracture nearly reduced even preoperatively and once the patient is kept in traction patient will have a relief of pain so for this purpose i need to apply a traction which is preferably a skeletal traction which means i will be inserting a steel man or a denim pin through the proximal part of the tibia then i will be inserting this instrument okay this one okay nearly a u shape okay with a circle below this is called as a bowler stirrup then i will be tying a thread then i will be suspending it with a weight okay based on the weight of the patient i will be suspending this bowler stirrup with the required weight so regularly 10 percentage body weight of the patient so for this skeletal traction purpose steel man pin and denim pin are most commonly used so what is the advantage of denim pin assume that my patient is a 60 year 70 year old patient with a osteoporotic bone so that time i will be preferably using the denim spin because since there are multiple threads at the uh, this thing multiple threads at the center this will be having a better hold or this won't be moving out from the bone surface in instead it will be locking at the bone surface even in the osteoporotic bone yes so this will be the advantage of the denim pin so this is the bowler stiff as i have already explained this this will be useful to suspend or this will be useful to attach the denim or the steel man pin for suspending it into the preferred weight for skeletal traction then the next instrument bone holding forceps so what is the purpose of the bone holding forceps so whenever the fracture fragments are displaced very much okay assume that this is a fracture yeah so this is a fracture and the fracture fragments are displaced and there is a huge overlap here okay so what i will do i will apply this clamp on the both proximal and distal aspect then i will distract them and i will align them okay so after so just to hold the bone okay i am using this bone holding forceps to hold the fracture fragments and i will be aligning them intraoperatively so that's why they are called as bone holding forceps then this is a bone nibbler they are used to nibble out the bone surface so what is mean by nibbling so nibbling for a better explanation i will say for a nibbling we all might have seen the mouse yes mice are mouse in our home okay what they will do they won't eat the food stuff assume that you kept a coconut okay or some vada it will go and it will superficially it will grind out superficially so that is called as nibbling so whenever assume that there is a fracture and there is a excess callus grown here i need to remove only the excess callus and on the other hand it the integrity of the cortex should be maintained so i will slowly remove only this excess callus so this process is called as nibbling so this instrument is used for the nib nibbling of the bone so that's why it's called as a bone nibbler then coming to the next instrument back horse towel clip as the name suggest for any surgery we will be draping the only the surgical part will will be it will be exposed and the other parts will be completely draped with a green sheet so for this draping after the multiple sheets are applied these sheets are tied together or they are locked together with this towel clip okay sir what is this towel clip why we need to own since in a orthopedic setup this towel clip has a multiple purpose assume that uh, your patient is having a fracture of the this thing metacarpal or the proximal phalanx fracture so this fracture fragments are displaced so in this small bones i cannot apply a bone holding regular bone holding forceps because they are of very big sizes okay so that time i will be using this towel clip to hold the this thing fracture fragments together so that time this towel clip is also called as pointed forceps are a pointed reduction forceps yes pointed reduction forceps so they have 
two purpose in orthopedics so coming to the next instrument bone chisel so you might have seen regularly in our home in a carpenter they will be using this chisel similar to that this purpose is the whenever a bone outgrowth is there okay whenever a excess bone outgrowth is there i need to chip out this this thing fragment of bone excess callus growth so that time i will be using a bone chisel so the bone chisel is not for cutting it is only to chip out which means the excess growth is there on the outer surface that time i will be chipping out just remove the outer part of the bone a bony outgrowth so for this purpose i will be using a bone chisel so this instrument is called as a osteotome sir both are looking same only just some of this instrument is curved here so what is the difference see in the cross section this sorry so in the cross section okay the chisel will look like this which means only one edge will be beveled beveled okay only one edge will be beveled in case of a bone chisel on the other hand if you take in cross section both the sides are beveled in the osteotome so this you should never forget okay so whenever since both looks similar you should not say that this is thick this is thin because both osteotome and chisel they are available in different thickness okay so that thickness is not the difference it's basically the tip which is this thing beveled only on the one surface in case of the bone chisel on the other hand both the edges are beveled in case of the osteotome they are used for the cutting the bone so they are not used to chip out the bone on the other hand they are used to cut out the bone so assume that there is a deformity here or a mal union here i need to cut through this bone then i will be using the osteotome and i will be doing hammering then i it will be used to to break the bone on the other hand bone chisel used to to chip out the bone okay and this one is called as a bone gas so the, there is a difference between the bone gas as well as the osteotome so osteotome is a this thing solid structure on the other hand this bone gas is somewhat this thing curved and it is not straight as well as in the center it will be a there is a hollow here okay so there is a hollow here so that only the shape in that same shape it will be this thing cutting through the bone or the chipping of the bone can be done with the help of the bone gas so this one is called as a bone scoop or a bone curettage so if the this thing tip is comparatively larger then it is called as bone scoop so it is used to scoop out the extra tissue or the hematoma from the fracture site so whenever we are going to open the fracture site there will be excess callus growth if it is a old fracture or there will be excess hematoma so this bone scoop will be inserted to scoop out the extra things which are not required at the fracture site so this is used for scooping out the extra callus or the hematoma so in the small bones yes in case of a small bones we cannot use this instead the tip will be very small then it is called as a bone curettage then the next instrument plate bender so we all know that some bones are not straight okay even though for diagrammatic repre representation we draw the bones in a straight thing we call it the metas long bones but our femur example that is this thing curved in the anterior aspect we all know that okay so that time to match the contour of the bone we need to contour the plates also the newer plates are already anatomically contoured to match the cont this thing contour of the bone but if you are using a simple plates like a dcp plate so that time we need to contour the dcp plate to match the this thing angulation of the bone so that time we need to bend the plates so this is the instrument to bend the plate so it is called as plate bender